During the 1980s, Disney was in deep trouble, mostly due to the fact that their projects really weren't making enough money, and the Black Cauldron was the last nail in the coffin when it came to that. But in that case, it kind of was their own fault that it ended up bombing. But the fact of the matter is, Disney would not have survived to what it is today if it weren't for the Disney Renaissance. Or at least, that's what people want you to think, because for some unknown reason, the true movie that saved Disney from disaster, The Great Mouse detective has been forgotten to time and it is a crying shame because this movie my friends is an underrated masterpiece and if it weren't for that trash Oliver and company I tell you this would have been considered the start of the Renaissance but obviously no one's going to include Oliver and company in the Renaissance so unfortunately this one also gets the boot but if you have never seen this movie just because it has never been included as part of the Disney Renaissance then you are missing out and honestly you really should just go watch it like go watch it and come back if you haven't seen it because it is just that good but if for some reason you don't understand why it's so good well you've come to the right place I'm sure that most fans of Disney animation will recognize the names John Musker and Ron Clements as they are the people who directed all of these films and as you can see pretty much all of them are beloved classics but I actually don't agree with one of these being a beloved classic but hey that's a video for another day leave your guesses for which one down below I guess but considering that even I still believe that the majority of their films are masterpieces how come no one ever talks about this one their first film well properly they did work on a few projects before that but this was their first actual major film that they created and that is an extremely important fact because outside of the fact that it isn't a musical, pretty much everything that makes the Disney Renaissance so good actually started in this movie, not The Little Mermaid. I mean, we have a fantastic story with amazing characters, incredible animation and atmosphere throughout the entire piece, memorable and well-composed music. And even though it's not a musical per se, there are still a couple of songs in this movie, one of which is amongst the peak of all Disney songs ever. But more on that later. One of the first things that makes this movie so great and helping it to stand out quite a bit from the other Disney animations is its moody mysterious atmosphere which is very rare amongst Disney animation off the top of my head I can only really think of a couple scenes in Pinocchio and Zootopia that give off a similar vibe but in those cases it's only for a few scenes whereas here it's the entire movie and it really makes you feel completely immersed in this world and the visuals are also stupendous here and not just the quality of the animation which is very good and it easily stands on par with the Disney Renaissance in my opinion but also just the unique perspective of seeing everything from the mice's point of view. The toy shop and Big Ben scenes are particularly impressive with their creative visuals. Another thing that I really like about this movie that makes it unique compared to most other movies I've seen is that it is a mystery movie where the mystery isn't necessarily who did it, but what are they doing and why? Because it's fairly obvious from the start that it is Radigan behind everything. And this is a good move because it allows Radigan to star as this enjoyable villain throughout the movie instead of only appearing at the last second and pretending to be good for the whole movie. Cough, Hans, cough. Of course, this would all mean nothing if the story and characters weren't great. But boy, did they make sure to deliver on that front in this movie. Firstly, we have Basil, who is, in my personal opinion, one of the greatest protagonists in Disney history. Amazing. Actually, it's elementary, my dear Dawson. He's incredibly flamboyant and expressive, which instantly makes him stand out. But more than that, he is also highly intelligent, which is both his greatest strength and his greatest weakness. It is what allows him to become such a great detective and uncover all these mysteries, constantly foiling the villain's plans. But at the same time, it also makes him very obsessive and disconnected from reality, as he has become completely engulfed in his mystery solving, that he doesn't actually seem to care that much about other people and their worries and problems. It's only the thrill of solving the case that that really matters to him, which is why when little Flavisham comes to ask for his help, he dismisses her almost immediately. Thank you, Miss... Flavisham. Olivia Flavisham. Yeah, whatever. As the thing that causes him to lose sleep is not the idea of other people being in danger, but the thought of not triumphing in this great mystery he has tried so long to solve. And the only reason he ends up actually choosing to help her is because she ends up being connected to this great mystery that he wants to solve. However, without even realizing it, him teaming up with Dawson and Flavisham is exactly what he needs to overcome his flaws. Since the first thing that Dawson did when he met Miss Flavisham was feel sorry for what happened to her and offer to help her find her father because he cared. We'll find this puzzle chat together. 
exactly the kind of thing that Basil is lacking. Basil only starts to notice these flaws that he has due to the fact that those around him don't have the same problems he has. Such as when he's so obsessed with trying to figure out the meaning of the footprints that he misses the obvious hat that Dawson spots, or how he's not able to control his dog as well as Flavisham is. Or most importantly, right after Flavisham is captured, all Basil can think about is how they got away, having no sympathy for her being captured, whereas Dawson is completely distraught at the idea of her being captured by this terrible villain. And it's in this moment that Basil finally starts to realize that perhaps he isn't thinking about this the right way. But even then, he still struggles to focus on her more than Radigan's plan, which almost ends terribly for him. And over the course of his adventure, Basil comes to really appreciate Dawson and Flavisham, to the point that in the end of the story, he does actually care more about saving her than stopping Radigan. But before he can reach that point, Basil has to overcome his greatest flaw, his perfectionism, something that is cleverly hinted at in his first ever scene when he throws a dart perfectly into the center of the dartboard. The fact that Basil has had so much success in solving mysteries has caused him to believe that he can do anything and do it right. But his obsessive search for Radigan causes him to miss the obvious as he is so focused on solving the mystery that he falls straight into his trap. And because he believed that he was such a great detective and could solve any mystery, this failure of falling into Radigan's trap completely breaks him, as his greatest belief was believing that he is the world's greatest detective, but to be beat by the world's greatest criminal mind makes him just a failure. Isn't it clear to you? The superior mind has triumphed! I've won! <laughs> and while Basil gives up hope, Dawson doesn't because he still sees hope and that there's a chance because he never had this obsession with always being the best detective and stopping Radigan. And in this moment, Basil is forced to realize that it isn't about solving the crime and stopping the villain, but helping those in need that is truly what is important. And so he changes the setting in his mind from stopping the villain to saving the innocent. And now that he has overcome his greatest weakness, there is truly nothing that can stop him. And even after overcoming his greatest weakness, Basil realizes that he still has room to grow as a person, which is why he wants Dawson to work with him in the future, because he knows that if he goes back to being on his own, he may lose sight of what is truly important once again and start to become overly obsessed with his mysteries. But with Dawson by his side, he can prevent him from going astray and keep him on the right path. And together, they can become an unstoppable duo. But what is the point of having a great protagonist if you don't have an equal equally great antagonist. And I do genuinely mean equally great. Like, if you asked me who I prefer, Basil or Professor Radigan, it would be a pretty hard choice. Because even though I just talked about how great Basil is as a character, Radigan is also supreme. Not only does he too, like Basil, have amazing animation and expressions, as well as a very flamboyant personality, but on top of all that, he is also voiced by Vincent Price. All will bow before me. Simply perfect cast. Ratigan is one of those villains who is just simply bad, but in a really entertaining and great way. And he's more than just simply bad, too, as his evil schemes are about more than just taking over the world, because deep down, it's really more about proving that he is better than Basil. You see, Ratigan can't stand Basil, firstly because he always ruins every plan and scheme that he comes up with, but furthermore because it takes the spotlight off of himself and puts it on Basil. Basil instead. Radigan's flamboyant and expressive personality seems to be a byproduct of Basil himself. Because of the fact that he can't stand that Basil always takes the spotlight, he is constantly trying to outdo him, to outperform him, so to speak. Which is why his flamboyant and expressive personality seems more like an act than his actual personality, which deep down is a vicious and vile monster filled with hate. Something he disguises because he knows that it will only make people hate him more and like him less. And the reason his schemes are so over the top, so that when he finally does defeat Basil and take over, people will always remember it as this grand event, unlike anything else they've ever seen before, thus ensuring his name in the history books. Oh, and also on the topic of elaborate plans, I can't simply make a great mouse detective video and not talk about the outstanding trap that Radigan lays for Basil. Not only does this guy create a trap in which Basil will die by every possible mean that you could kill him, but he also sets it up so that it will take a photo of his death so that he can see it for himself despite not being there. And on top of all of that, he also sets it to the backdrop of a specially recorded song just for Basil. Yes! I am a genius! 
You should have chosen your friends more carefully. Which also happens to be the best song in the movie. What an absolute legend. He may not have gone down in the history books of his own world, but we shall never forget him and his pure genius. But because Basil is just as much of a legend as Rattigan, he does the unthinkable and not only escapes the unescapable trap, but pulls the biggest flex in Disney history when he poses for the camera that was meant to take a picture of his death and smiles instead. A legend amongst legends. And speaking of these two legends, in the end, they must fight it out inside of Big Ben, one of the greatest final battle set pieces seen in any Disney animated movie. And the ultimate victor will be decided not only by their skill in a fight, but by who has come to see the truth of the matter, that it isn't always about being the best and stopping your nemesis, but that there are more important things at stake. And obviously I'm talking about Basil, who easily beats Radigan in all these categories. Well, except physical strength, where he does struggle a little bit in that category. But he manages to get a little bit of a justice against Radigan by proving that he really is smarter than him, as he only pretended to fall to his death so that he could be in a more advantageous position than Radigan when the clock strikes the next hour. And at last, the world is set right. Until, of course, the next mystery comes along. And that, my friends, is why The Great Mouse Detective is an absolute underrated gem of a movie. And I cannot recommend it enough if you haven't seen it. The fact that Disney has completely forgotten its existence, despite the fact that it basically saved their entire studio, is practically incomprehensible. And I shall not rest until the day this movie gets the respect that it deserves. So go forth, my minions, and together we shall force Disney to remember the greatness of this criminally underrated movie. Well, there you have it, my thoughts on this movie, and I'd also love to hear your thoughts on this movie, so be sure to tell me in the comments down below. And now I must give a big thanks to all my channel members and Patreon supporters, whose names should be flowing along the screen right now. And if you're interested in following me on social media, then I have links in the description down below. Additionally, if you're interested in supporting me further, I have channel memberships and a Patreon account that you could join. But don't go just yet. I have several other interesting videos you might want to watch as well, such as this one on The Black Cauldron, another one of Disney's 80s animated movies, or perhaps this one on The Rescuers Down Under, another criminally underrated movie featuring mice as the protagonists. But most importantly of all, always remember to be iconic.